Hello, Judy Flynn. Hi, everyone. It's great to be back to Prayer School 103. I'm glad you made it today. Yes, it's a good time to, to gather at the word, at the feet of the word of God. The Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, talking about the Lord Jesus. So every time we gather to hear the word, we're, we're gathering to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is the prayer school 103, a vision that God has given us to, to create an environment where we learn to pray more effectively. The disciples of Jesus said, Lord, teach us to pray. And that is what we're endeavoring to do in this place, to learn to pray more effectively. Let me encourage you, excuse me, let me encourage you to get your notepad, get your Bibles, and then get ready to be taught. We have a wonderful teacher lined out, uh, up for us this evening. No other but my really good friend, uh, Minister Fumi QJ. She's not, she doesn't need any introduction in prayer school. She's a, you know, she one of those main teachers in prayer school. God bless you, Minister Fumi. We we'll, would we'll love to have you. You're going to do the opening prayer and bring on what the Lord has for us tonight. God bless you. And I'll see you at the end. Uh, thank you so very much. Can you all hear me okay? Thank you so very much, Pastor Agatha. You are a blessing to this generation. And I thank God for your life. We thank God for every single person that is behind the scene. God bless you so very much. Let's start with a word of prayer as we go into today's session. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your abiding presence. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who is already here. Spirit of the living God, we turn over the meeting to you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for being the voice behind the voice. Thank you for granting me utterance. Thank you because my lips is like the pen of a ready writer. Thank you because it's all of you. You use my mind, speak through my mouth. Let tonight be a, 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 a night with a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for Pastor Agatha. Thank you for all those administrators behind the scene that we don't see, Ebu and Ngozi and Moji. Lord, we thank you for your blessings over them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you all see me okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Tonight is a very, very good night in that um, we are going to be looking at a subject that most people do not like in, um, in, the, in, in our, 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 our um, how can I say, most Christians don't talk about it. They think it's outdated, it's no longer valid. We're going to be looking at the, the we're going to be looking at prayer and fasting tonight. So I thank God for all my predecessors that have taught about prayer. They've done a perfect job. And I will not really go back into the types of prayers because I want to maximize my time. I think I only have about 30 minutes. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to say is that to, to really get this thing that we're going to be talking about today, I, I in the previous prayer schools 101 and 102, I looked at the subject relentless prayers and then the second time I think it was pray until something happened it's actually around the same kinds of prayer for 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 prayer summary of prayer is that there is a two dimension two dimension angle of prayer there's a twofold dimension angle of prayer there is prayer that is communing and fellowshipping with God which is our priestly ministry and it is this relationship that is the foundation of every kind of prayer. The, the, the relationship we have with God, where we have we see him as our father and he's our children, where we recognize his love, where we understand his love, so that by the time we begin to pray from the second dimension of prayer, which is the kingly dimension of prayer, we are able to legislate. We are going to be able to make decrees. We're able to mandate, we're able to enforce, we're able to make changes, you know. So like I said, there are two dimensions. There's a priestly dimension, which is the one that offers up sacrifices. Remember 1 Peter 2, 9, this is where we're a royal priesthood. So that, that, that dimension is a dimension that offers sacrifices, incenses to God. The second dimension of prayer is the one where we legislate and mandate. And the last time I talked about what God said, and, and what the word of God said about this kind of prayer. Revelations 1, 5, 7 articulates this type of prayer. Saying God has made us this kind of, articulates this two-dimensional aspect of our, our, our relationship with God. Kings and priests unto our father. We said that kings, 
Kings are the ones that make decrees. Kings are the ones that legislate. Things are the ones that make things happen. When a king wants a dead dog, a, a dead dog, or, or a ditch dog, <laughs> they do not need to carry the shovel. They speak. They make orders. They make decrees. So when we talk about relentless prayers, which is what I talked about the last time, or when we want to talk about supplication type of prayers, these are the prayers that we don't pray once. These are not the prayers that you pray one week. These are not the prayers sometimes you pray one month. These are the prayers that you pray over and over again. You are literally wrestling for a change. It is on your mind. You are praying this prayer consistently. You are relentless. You are staking your claim. You are insisting on your rights. You are like a bulldog. You are staying with it until it turns. You pray it constantly. You pray it persistently. You pray it in the day. You pray it at noon. Somebody said, but isn't that a, 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 a prayer that is that is um, faithless? No. Actually, it's faith-based prayers based on the word of God and inspired by the Holy Spirit. You never go wrong. But in this kind of prayers, these are the kind of prayers you pray when you pray for nations. You don't pray this kind of prayer for, for, for half an hour. You can't pray this prayer with such an agree. This is the kind of prayer you stay on until there's a change. This is the kind of prayer that the Bible calls supplication. Philippians 4, 6 clearly states, be careful for nothing, but in everything. In everything, hallelujah, by prayer and supplication, which means it is two. Not just prayer, there is supplication. Prayer and supplication, intense prayer. The, 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 the dictionary defines supplication as a, it's more than a casual, heartfelt, um, like a daska request. It's a humble, earnest entreaty or request. It is fervent, it is earnest, it, 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 it is heartfelt. Hallelujah. So we see that the Bible makes a clear distinction between these two kinds of prayer. So we see that this second part, this supplication, is where you pray passionately and perseveringly. Hallelujah. The nature of supplication, while I round up this, is more than a heartfelt casual request. It means a humble, heartfelt entreaty or request. Hallelujah. And we see that Jesus, in his time on earth, had this kind of prayer life. The Bible tells us he, in Luke 18:1, Jesus talked about the importunity of prayer. He talked about men ought always to pray, con to present continuous, and not to faint, not to turn coward, not to give up. We see more than once in the Bible, Luke 6, 12 to 16, the Bible says at that time, he climbed to the mountain to pray. He was there all night in prayer. Hallelujah. Luke 21 also tells us that when he was teaching in the temple and at night, he went out and abode in the mountain to pray. Hallelujah. And all the people came early in the morning to hear him. Hallelujah. That automatically is a revelation. If we want to be heard, we need to spend time praying. Hallelujah. You know, I like Psalm 109 verse 4 in the TPT, the Passion Translation. It says, pray until you become prayer. Colossians 4 2 says to continue in prayer, continue steadfastly in prayer, watching therein with thanks, thanksgiving. Be persistent, be unwearied, be steadfast, be devoted, be alert, be focused. Those are different ways the different trans translations of the Bible have, have pitched it. Persevering in prayer, persistent, staying alert, devote yourself to prayer. Hallelujah. If you have, if you are taking notes, take this down. Relentless bulldog, stubborn, persistent, consistent prayers. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to say that again. Relentless, bulldog, stubborn, persistent, and consistent prayers. Persistent, persistence always wears down resistance. There is no mountain that a Christian can face that persistence in prayer, especially prayers that are filled with power, filled with the word, Feel powerful prayers that are inspired of the Holy Ghost, prophetically inspired prayers. When you pray the word of God, that's prophetic prayers, by the way. Those are the ones that get the word done, that gets the job, job done. But today, my assignment here is to go a notch further. We're putting a brick on what we have built already. We're putting another brick on the foundation of persistent prayers. And that brick is fasting. Hallelujah. What is the mission of fasting? I know I don't, when it's five minutes old, ladies just, just ping me because I, you know, I can, I, I can go on and on. 
what exactly is fasting? How does, how, what is fasting to the New Testament Christian? And is it really applicable to us in the New Testament? I mean, Jesus has died. Is this really applicable? What is the place of fasting? Hallelujah. Let's start from the beginning. Fasting. Almost every religion in the world fasts. Hindus fast, Jews fast, Buddhists fast, Muslims fast 30 days in a year, Satanists, people that are committed to worshiping the devil, they fast. Even the world all of a sudden has woken up and recognized that when you fast, you detox your body so that your mind can be alert. So is fasting really for the New Testament Christian? Question mark. Is there a supernatural dimension to fasting that we, are, we don't really understand? What does fasting mean in the spirit realm? How does it affect our body? How does it affect our mind? These are questions we intend to answer today. If I, by any chance I don't answer these questions, I want you at the end of the day to just ping it in the chat and we'll be looking outside. What is fasting? Fasting, according to the scriptures, the Bible, is abstenance, abstenance from food, a voluntary reduction or elimination of our, our intake of food for a specific time and purpose. Fasting is denying the flesh of its comfort to get the spirit sharper to connect with the spiritual. All religions of the earth that fast know that when you fast, your spiritual senses are heightened and you are able to connect to the spiritual, whether it's in the negative or whether it's in the positive. That's one, number one reason why people fast. There are spiritual activities in the word of God and the Bible spells many of them out in the scriptures. Some of them we may not naturally comprehend with our mind. I mean, I was reading the scriptures the other day. Moses, they were in, at war and Moses, as, as long as his hands were lifted, they were winning the war. Hello, what has lifting of hands got to do with winning the war? That's why I said there are spiritual activities that we may not necessarily understand or comprehend with our natural mind, but they, they make high spiritual impact. Hallelujah. One of the things I understand with God is that everything that God asks us to do is not for him. It's for ourselves. The modern church has redefined fasting, the meaning of fasting. The definition of fasting has been stretched to mean a lot of things, which are beneficial, but not necessarily biblical. We are told we do not necessarily need to abstain from food. We can refrain from TV, from social media, from our phones, which is commendable, which is praiseworthy. It, I mean, it helps us to take our eyes off and, and, and the cares of the world that choke the word of God we're able to push away. But is this what biblical fasting is? Biblical fasting, as we see from the scriptures, is abstaining from food or certain kinds of food. Fasting in the Hebrew word means to close our mouth, which means no food. Hallelujah. In the Greek, it means voluntary abstinence from food. I'll tell you, and I say this every time I was saying this to the ladies and gents that fasted with us in November, fasting is not easy. Fasting is not convenient. Nobody has a gift of fasting. If it was, everybody would be doing it. Hallelujah. Fasting can be painful. It can be productive. But this is a type of, but there is a type of fast that can accommodate everybody. And before we finish today, we're going to be talking about the different kinds of fast. You know, people say, oh, I don't want to fast. There are fasting that you fast, that you fast intelligently that will not damage your health. And it will still get you the same result. So today we're going to be looking at what fasting is in the Old Testament. What fasting is, is in the New Testament. What fasting is to the church. What did Jesus say about fasting? When do I need to fast? What are the benefits of fasting? What are the five types of fasting prescribed in the scriptures? We're going to be looking at all that today. Just stay with me. Hallelujah. Every time we see in the scriptures where it says people are humbling themselves in the Old Testament, it means they were fasting. They were abstaining from food. Fasting, like I said before, before I go into what the Old Testament says, is engaging the spiritual. Remember, I didn't say it is engaging the spiritual for spiritual, mental, physical, financial, ministerial, municipal, city, family breakthrough, you are engaging the spiritual to work in your faith. Hallelujah. Engaging the spiritual to enforce a possibility. 
You are slowing down the flesh to fast track, to accelerate the spirit. Fasting is moving the hand of the enemy off and keeping the hand of the enemy on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, if you've got your pen, I just want to see which category you belong to here. Why do the New Testament Christians, why don't we fast? One, we believe that grace has exempted us from fasting. I know one of my friends actually who is a pastor said, for me, fasting is actually works. God has, Jesus has finished the work. Sometimes people say, I don't feel led to fast. I'm not motivated to fast. Others say, for me, I may not be able to fulfill my end of the bargain. People have, prayer is enough. Why do I need to fast? I have fasted before, I don't get results. These are the, some of the reasons that people do not fast. If you are taking notes, I just want you to put yourself in which category you belong because this is a school, so we should be taking notes. Which category do I belong? Why don't I fast? Why don't I engage in fasting? In the Old Testament, when we read it, we see that there was a lot of fasting going on in the Old Testament. I mean, we read that kings fasted. I mean, these are leaders, people in authority, they fasted. Second Chronicles told them about Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles 20, verse 2 to 4. They are, they, I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, there comes a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Azazotama, which is Engedi. And verse three says, Jehoshaphat feared. Hallelujah. He set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Kings fasted. The Bible re re recalled King Ahab fasted. He fasted and in, in, in 1 Kings 21, 7, when he had had what the prophet had come to tell to him, Bible says he rent his clothes. He put on sackcloth upon his flesh. He fasted. Kings fasted. Hallelujah. So some of us here were in big positions of authority. We are, we are presidents of, of organizations. We are in leadership. We are governors. We are senators. I'm calling you guys in. Hallelujah. You receive it. They fasted. Then we saw that prophets fasted in the Old Testament. I mean, these were people anointed by God. The, 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 the anointing of God, the Holy Spirit was not residential, but the Holy Spirit fell on them and left. The Bible records they fasted. Nehemiah. Nehemiah fasted when he heard in Nehemiah 1, 2 to 4, when he had reports about what was happening in Jerusalem and the, what was happening in the men of Judah. Hallelujah. And what those that were left of the captive, when he heard what was said concerning Jerusalem, he fasted. When we heard that the walls of Jerusalem was broken down, he fasted. And it came to pass. He said, when I heard these words, I'm going to read Nehemiah 1 verse 2. And Anani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant that are left of the captive there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. And it came to pass. The Bible says when Nehemiah heard these words, he sat down, he wept, he mourned many days and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. Hallelujah. What, do we, what can we glean from, from this? We see how this guy fasted. Sometimes Christians see all the time, we see broken lives, broken homes. We see things broken down around us. Nehemiah didn't need to fast. He was in a good place. He was a cup bearer. He was living good. But when he saw what was happening to his people, the Bible says he prayed and he fasted. And the king released the resources required to build the broken walls of Jerusalem, thereby removing the shame and reproach from Jerusalem. A lot of times, because we are so comfortable sometimes, we are blinded to see what other people are going through. Are we fasting and praying for those lives, those children, those, those people, those widows, those widowers, those who are suffering affliction, those who are in dire poverty? Hallelujah. Another, person, another prophet that fasted in the Old Testament, there were many of them. Moses fasted. Every, every single prophet, you, if you read the scriptures, you see they fasted. But I just brought out these two, Nehemiah and Ezra. Ezra was on his way to building up, to rebuilding the temple. 
Ezra chapter 8, verse 21 to 23. Ezra had so much resources and he didn't want to ask. He didn't want to ask the king to, to after giving him all these resources, he didn't want to ask for protection again. So he asked protection of the Lord. He asked protection that God would, would protect their children. They were on a journey to build the temple. They needed protection from robbers, from hijackers, from terrorists. He prayed. We also see Queen Esther praying for three days. We see leaders praying, Moses fasted, Joshua fasted, Daniel fasted, and we'll be talking about Daniel in the next few minutes. Daniel fasted for 21 days. This is one of the most, most revealing things about fasting in the Old Testament so that we see behind the scene what happens when we are tenacious, when we are persistent, when we insist, especially when we amplify our prayers with fasting. We see what happens behind the scene. The Bible says to Daniel, verse I'm just going to run now because I see my time is fast going. Hallelujah. Somebody stop the clock. Daniel fasted for 21 days. We see Daniel. He was, the Bible says Daniel read the books. He understood that after 70 years, the Babylonian captivity needed to have ended, but they didn't end. They were still in captivity. Jeremiah 29, 10, he read it. So that the Lord said, after 70 years, we accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you. He saw that, but he wasn't seeing it manifesting. He realized that 70 years had passed had expired, but there was no release in the horizon. So he went to pray and he went to fast, which is what I talked about resilience, about perseverance, about persisting, about insisting, don't get determination through prayer amplified with fasting. Daniel 9, 2 to 3. In the first year of the, of the reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years where of the Lord God, where the Lord God came to Jeremiah the prophet. So he saw what was written about them. Do we see what is written about us in the scriptures? Do we see what is written about us in the scripture? Do we have a manifestation of what is written about us in the scriptures? It's one thing to read, it's another thing to see the manifestation. I mean, this guy read, Daniel saw the scriptures. He saw what was written about them. He saw it clearly in the scriptures, but he wasn't, see, he wasn't seeing it. And although the promises are in, in the word, a lot of times they are delayed. A lot of times they are denied because of the assumption that they would automatically happen. The promise of the Messiah was all over the Old Testament, but Anna still had to pray. She prayed and fasted for a safe delivery of a prophetic destiny. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10, I'm going to read this. And I'm going to read it from the King James, authorized King James version. Daniel chapter 10, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar. And this thing was true, but the time appointed was for long, which means the vision he saw was not an immediate thing. It was for something that was going to happen later. Verse 2 says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three weeks. I was fasting. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself for those three weeks. And I jumped. Then I, he was walking. This is my paraphrase. I lifted up my eyes and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loin was guard with fine gold of, of officer. His body was like burial and his face as the appearance of the lightning. Hallelujah. I mean, when you fast extensively, you will hit something in the spiritual. And Daniel, I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. There were people with Daniel, they didn't see anything. For the man that, will, that were with me saw not the vision. Which means sometimes when we are in a continuous state of prayer, I mean, we see the giftings of the Holy Ghost, solely to digress. We see what God says it is our inheritance. And we don't see it in our lives. And we are explaining it away. No, you've prayed enough. Now amplify those prayers a bit. Amplify them with fasting. Hallelujah. And then we see behind the scene what the angel of the Lord said. Verse 10, Daniel 10, 10. And behold, an hand touched my mouth, touch me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto you and stand upright. For unto thee a man now sent. And when he had spoken these words unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, 
For from the first day, from the first day, underline if it is your Bible, from the first day that thou set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself. Goodness, from the first day you set yourself to pray, your words were heard. Your words were heard. And I am come for thy words. I have come for thy words. That's why you cannot keep speaking. You cannot, you cannot keep silent. You must keep speaking. You must keep praying. You must keep insisting. This my child will turn. This my child will serve God. This my child will be full of the Holy Ghost. This my child, you must keep speaking. That is a prophetic word for somebody. You must keep insisting. He's thought of the Lord. Great is his peace. He is inspired. He's for signs and for wonders. You must not talk it. You must stop, not stop talking. Verse 13 says, but the, praise of, but the praise of the king of Persia withstood me. 20 days, 20 and one days. What if he had quit on the 17th day? What if he had quit on the 18th day? What if he had quit? Hallelujah. Fasting in the new, in the time of Jesus. What did Jesus say about fasting? Before we go there, I want us to know that the modus operandi of fasting is stated out in Isaiah 58, 6. Is this not the kind of fast I have chosen? Which means God himself chooses fast to lose the chains of injustice, to untie the, co the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke. You have, if you've been on a, a prayer regime for a long time and it's not shifting, and it's not moving, you need to amplify that prayer with fasting. Hallelujah. When Jesus was on earth, hallelujah, he preceded his ministry with fasting. This is Jesus who was born of the Holy Ghost, who had the spirit of God without measure. He was impregnated of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Look for one. The Bible says he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He left Jordan and was left of the spirit in the wilderness where he was there for 40 days. Matthew chapter 4. Fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus went on this long fast. Am I advocating that you go? No. He's already gone. You don't need to go, but you at least you do something. Hallelujah. Please note that Jesus functioned on this planet as a man, empowered by the Holy Ghost. As he was, as he is, so are we. He had an assignment. A lot of us had to have assignments. Sometimes the assignments are challenging. Jesus had a difficult assignment. So he preceded it with fasting. Hallelujah. The Bible does not record that. The Bible says afterwards he was hungered. The Bible didn't say he was thirsty. So I assumed he must have been drinking. Hallelujah. There's nowhere in the scripture that says he didn't drink. But the Bible says he abstained from food. What did Jesus say about fasting? Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. Jesus said, when you fast, do not look sober as the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces to show that they are fasting. Hallelujah. When you fast. This is similar to what he said about praying in Matthew 6, 5, 6, and 7. When you pray. When you pray. Which means he expects us to fast. When you fast. Which means there is a set duration assigned to fast. This is Jesus sitting in, speaking himself. When you fast. I checked out that word. That word means whenever, in as much, as often, every time that, which implies there is a regularity to this activity. It is a repeated act. It's not one-off. He goes further to say, it is not obvious to others that you are fasting, but to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Your father who sees what is done in secret, which implies fasting carries a reward. Fasting always delivers. Hallelujah. Prayers amplified with fasting. I said every time I talk about fasting, know that prayer is in front. If you fast without praying, you are on that strike. It's portion control. We need to pray. When you are fasting, the prayer is the, is the, is the most important, vital ingredient of fasting abstinence from food for a certain period of time. And we're going to talk about types of fasting in a minute so that I don't just go on seven-day fast and say for me to, me to fast for seven days. Hallelujah. What Jesus said about fasting, again, Luke 5, 33 to 35. They said to him, they challenged him, why do, your, why do the disciples of John fast and your own disciples, they do not fast? What did he say? Can you make the children of the bride, bride chamber fast when the bridegroom is with them? 
but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away. That word taken away means take, levitate, taking up, going up. When, when, which is the same word used when the translation, the, the Hebrew translation is the same as when Jesus was taken up at ascension. From then, they shall fast in those days. This same scriptures was recorded three times. Fasting is not a church doctrine. It is a scriptural prescription by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And finally, everybody knows the story. This story was recorded. This is when Jesus, when they came to meet Mark chapter, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Mark, it was also recorded in Matthew, Mark chapter nine. The, this, a man brought his son to the disciples. He told them, Mark, Luke 9, 37 to 43, if you're writing down notes. I'll start reading from verse 38. And behold, he came down from, he was coming down from the Mount of Trans Transfiguration. And behold, a man of the company cried out, Master, I beseech you, look upon my child. Is my only child. Look at how wicked the devil is. Is my only child. But no, a spirit takes him. He suddenly cries out. He tears him. He forms. The guy was happy in an epileptic fit. And he could, the spirit could not depart from him. And I brought him to your disciples to cast him out. And they could not. They could not. Which means they tried. They tried to cast him out. What did Jesus say in verse 41? Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? Bring the son. First, he, first he addressed their faithlessness. Then he rebuked the devil. The devil tried to embarrass him, but he drove the devil out. The Bible said they were all amazed. And Mark 9 recalls that when they came to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? So he said to them, this kind, this kind comes out by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. And fasting. In Matthew, fasting was not in italics. This, this kind of spirit comes out only if you use prayer and fasting. EXB translation. The disciples walked with Jesus. They listened to him. They traveled with him. But their authority was challenged and the master puts it down to three things. Faithlessness, prayer, and fasting. So we see the connection between faith, fasting, and prayer to bring results. Effective prayer and fasting is a springboard of genuine faith. Faith, faith gleans the unseen realm. Faith looks into the unseen, the impossible realm. Faith knows that it is there. Prayer and, and fasting delivers it, transports it from that realm into this realm. Hallelujah. The combination of these three is, an, is, 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 is a secret weapon that will bring down the biggest challenges. It unleashes the supernatural. Remember what I said to you at the beginning. Our fasting always connects us to the supernatural. I think I have this, 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 this. Agatha was the first person I had talk about this, that in the realm of the spirit, they all be there are angels, there are all of the spiritual beings are there. Which one are you addressing? Hallelujah. That's why I said all religions fast because they connect to the spiritual. But we that have the, the most powerful, potent power on our side, we neglect this powerful, this powerful principle, this powerful tool, this powerful instrument that God has given us to invest the provision. Look, I did some research. The disciples struggle with the devil, but Jesus in his response said this kind. This kind. The Greek word for this kind is from the, from the word called genus, which is from where we get the word genes, genesis, genetics. This kind. This kind. This was not just a physical sickness. It was something to do with his genesis, his foundation. It was, not, it was a generational disorder. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you address this thing, you need to stay with it in prayer and fasting to dislodge it. Sometimes say, but I prayed, I prayed, I spoke to it. Different people speak because they because it depends on your bandwidth in the spiritual. I can speak to something once and we go. Some people may speak to it 10 times before it leaves. Why? Why? We're going to address that before we finish. Why does it take some people once? Why does it take some people 10 times? Whichever part of the paper, of the, of the track you're on, insist we've got the power. I like that song. We've got the power. 
Hallelujah. Negative spiritual trapping devices can be dislodged with the prayer amplified with fasting. Someone say, oh, for me, you don't understand. I've been on this one. Something is, I, I love what Pastor Agatha, you're such a blessing. He said, you are, you said they are doing you to do the thing. Who is doing you? Don't do the thing back. You've got the Holy Ghost, the biggest power on this universe, on your side, on your inside. Use it. Use him. There are situations that gang up to embarrass the victory of the, of the, of, of the saints. We can challenge them through this threefold. Faith is a faith. Fasting, faith, and prayer and fasting is an unbeat, unbeatable trinity. Fasting is a spiritual catalyst for our prayers. It infuses spiritual value to our prayers. It gives energy to effective praying. It is the turbo charge to the energy. Some of you have, have seen the Grand Prix. There are some engines that when they started, it's not the same as Koda. They are not on the same level. Hallelujah. Don't let the God of the belly rob us of our birthrights. He so lost his birthright to food. Philippians 3 talks about the God of the, the where, where their God is their belly. Hallelujah. There is a spiritual realm that is as, as real as this realm. Hallelujah. We may not be able to see it with our optical eyes. We may not be able to grasp it with our, with our, with our intellect. But to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in these end times and the power of God discharge, as it relates to the supernatural, we need to combine the ministry of sound prayers with fasting. Hallelujah. The church, the New Testament. Acts 13, verse 2 to 3. As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said. Some of us need the Holy Ghost to say. You need the Holy Ghost to give you direction. And when it's going to the QA, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will touch on, on, on some of, some of um, my own, some of the testimonies that I've seen in this area, so that you know that this thing, even today, I still got a testimony. This thing is not a fluke. This thing is not a fluke. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, I think I have five more minutes for, to go. I think I've actually, I think my time is up. But let me say this. In the New Testament, they prayed. The Bible says in Acts 14, when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, with fasting. First Corinthians 7, 5, Paul was writing to the New Testament Christian, defraud you not, refraud you not one the other, except it be with the consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer. When you, hallelujah, I think I'll stop there. I will take the rest through prayer. I'm fasting, sorry. Hallelujah. Okay, I think I can go on. Let me quickly say this. What are the benefits of prayer and fasting? One of the things you know is fasting doesn't change God. God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. God loves us passionately. God loves us intensely. God loves us so much. He sent Jesus to hang on the cross and die a shameful death. We cannot impress God with our fasting. So if, for me, if I'm not trying to impress God, what is my fasting after? God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything we need to function on this earth. Ephesians 3 says he has blessed us with us. Ephesians 1, 3. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Everything we need to function here, God has released it. There is no healing needed in heaven. They don't spend dollar in heaven. Everything we need is here. Money has not left the planet. Giftings of the Holy Spirit are still here. Uh, more than ever before, I pray that the hunger for what you are chain will drive us to do this fasting. It's not God. Fasting does not change God, but he moves the spiritual to work in our favor. As we clearly read in the story of Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, verse 10. It moves the spiritual, especially when you insist when you keep your prayer focus on, and before we go, I will tell you some of some testimonies. I'll give you one or two or three just to encourage you. Remember the story of Cornelius. Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 was outside the covenant. The Bible says he was in fasting. His fasting provoked, he was seeking the true God. His fasting pro God, uh, the angel couldn't preach, but the angel moved on somebody else to come to him. Hallelujah. Fasting shapes the invisible and the unseen realm. The tangible, it, 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 it shapes the unseen. 
it shapes the 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 the, 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 the tangible world. To, it changes it in our favor. Fasting provokes transactions in the spiritual realm to to pro, to, to promote our speedy answers. Fasting sharpens our spiritual senses. There is no distraction in the mind when the body is under control. One of the things fasting is always shuts down your mind, shuts down your body. Your body is not in control. Your, your, the Holy Spirit speaking to you is amplified. It enlarges your spiritual capacity. Your, 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 your capacity to reason out spiritual things is, is clear. You see things clearly in the spirit. The word of God comes alive when you fast. Hallelujah. So what... I, I can pick that up in the Q&A. You know, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. One of the things that helps your mind, sobriety of mind, one of the things that helps it the most is fasting or living a consistent fasted life. And we'll talk about that in a minute, which means that, that there is a place for a, a, a consistency of in the spiritual where you're always sharp. Sometimes you notice that you are dull. Your, your prayer life is dull. When you are speaking to something is dull. If the, if the axe is blunt, then you will need to apply double strength. Ecclesiastes 10, 10. But when you live a, a, a life where you are consistently putting your flesh under in the place of prayer and fasting, you will have perpetual victory. Just like Jesus designed for us. Hallelujah. Lastly, when you fast your spirit, takes ascendancy. It becomes bigger than the voice of your mind. This is very, very important when you need to make key decisions, key strategic decisions. You need to fast. You need to pray. Don't just pray. Should I move to Canada? Should I move to the US? Don't just carry your bag and say, oh yes, I got the green card and I have to go. No. God, are you there? God, is this you? This is what the apostles clearly told us when they were choosing leaders. They were choosing Saul and Barnabas. They prayed, they fasted. Many of us have, we, we start up a business, we, we hire people that wreck the business, that sabotage the business because we forgot this ingredient of saying, okay, I have the business. Okay, you, I know you are Christians, but Paul and, Paul and Silas, but, 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 but Barnabas and Saul, but are you the ones that should go with Paul? Are you the ones? Or should we send Nicholas? Should we send Stephen? Who should we send? At that time, I think Stephen was not dead. Or I don't know if he was dead. I think he was dead at that time. Hallelujah. One more minute. What are the types of fast? There are absolute fast, which is a full dry fast, which you can fast for three days, but no longer than this, as this can be fit, as this can be detrimental to your health. Most times when you want to fast longer than three days, you need to drink. Water has no nutritional value, and we need water to, to, to stay alive. I think a certain percentage, more than 50% of our body mass is water. So we need to drink fluid when we want to go on a long fast. Hallelujah. You can live a fasted lifestyle, which means you, make, you miss one or two meals every day. You know, especially if you want to do the, a prayer of consecration, a prayer where you wanted to be, if God is calling you into a ministry. I have a friend of mine. I'm going to give a testimony later, maybe doing a question at Q&A. I mean, he, he, he decided, look, someone said, oh, but that's a long time. Look, that's how some people eat in Africa. They miss two meals a day. I only eat, miss one and they are still alive. So you can do that, you can do that extensively, especially when you're believing God for something that is sticky. And the Daniel fast is there. The Daniel fast is where you're only eating certain types of food. That means you can eat anything except these certain types of food. The Bible says Daniel did not eat some breads. He did not eat desserts, some, some, some other versions of the Bible say. So he has sent from cake, he has sent some bread. Some people say the Daniel fast is a, is a fruit fast. I've done that several times. I do it several times in a year where you're only eating fruits and drinks. And, and, and fluids, hallelujah. And there's a traditional fast, which is you could fast for just one day. I believe a Christian should fast at least one day a week. A Christian who wants to go somewhere, a Christian who wants to happen, who wants to happen on the happenings. You want to be a pandemic to the pandemic. You need to a, a fast regularly. It's not, so, you know, even the world recognizes that for health reasons, you have to let your digestive system slow down. You need to fast regularly, make it your lifestyle. Nobody needs to cajole you. They don't need to call a fasting church before you fast. Hallelujah. And my time is up. Hallelujah. I go, I go back to the... Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor Agi, um, I'm, I'm ready to take some QA panelists. I'm sorry. I think I've exceeded my okay. time again. No, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Fumi. That was really wonderful. So the first question we have is... It uh, goes as follows. I abstain from food, but struggle with staying focused to pray and meditate on scripture. What can I do to address this issue? 
Praise God. Usually when you start a fast, I'll advise that you pray extensively in the Holy Spirit. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you can't pray amiss. You can't pray wrong. Because he knows what you're looking for. He knows what you're praying for. He knows why you're praying. By the time you pray extensively in the Holy Ghost, I don't want to use that word you do that for a couple of hours. Start If you can't start with 10 minutes, start with 20, start with 30, depending on where you're at. There are some people who can pray for an hour. There are some who can pray for two. There are some who can pray for three. By the time you pray extensively in the Holy Ghost according to your capacity, whether you are featherweight, middleweight, whatever weight you are, pray according to your capacity. If you have been born again for a while, I expect you to be able to pray for 30 minutes. Just play one of the spirit beaks and pray the Holy Spirit for 30 minutes at a stretch, minimum. Then, when you pick up the word, you think you will know it's not newspaper. The word of God begins to jump off the page. It begins to stay alive. And before I go on a fast, I have a journal. And my journal is here with me. I have a journal that I write down. What am I praying for? What am I fasting for? Where you communicate with the Lord. So this is why I'm praying. So you stay focused. If you are praying for your child or praying for your, or your wife or praying for your husband, you are right. This is what I'm praying for. These are the key scriptures that, 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 that govern what, what I'm praying for. And you stay with it. Hallelujah. I don't know if I have uh, some time to give a quick testimony. Do I have some time? Yes. Yeah, we have lots of questions, but we obviously are very interested in your testimonies. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. I think we should take the questions and I'll give the testimonies after. Go okay. So, so that's for that person. Start by praying in the Holy Spirit. Stay focused. Write something down. Have a journal. So that when you see the results, you know this is the day I prayed. Go on. Thank you. Next question. How do we know when to add fasting to our prayers? Is it when we have a specific leading to do so? Should we fast all the time to, in order to speed things up? Uh, how, do we, how do we know okay, uh, what, when to do this? I appreciate some insights. Thank you. you will never have a leading to fast. The body will never tell you go and fast. The Holy Spirit is the only one that will say go and fast. Usually, when you are up against something bigger than you, you need to fast. When you are prayed over something over and over and it doesn't shift to shift, amplify it with a bit of fast. Start with one, two, three days. Usually, most things turn around within three days. Remember Esther? Esther said everybody fast. In three days, the whole council, that was the whole law, was overturned because of fast. When you have prayed and prayed and prayed and you see that the answer is delayed, Amplify it with fasting. Start with three days. Then if it doesn't go, move to seven days. I, I'm no, I don't mean seven days dry. Move. Just keep at it. Because especially when you see it in the word, God is not withholding from you. God is not your problem. He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. So as we see in the case of Daniel, the person that restricts, that hinders, that he impedes, that is trying to block, is the enemy. God has no hand in it. When you see it in the word and you don't see it in your life, as in the case of Daniel, when their 70 years captivity was up, but they were still in bondage, amplify it with person. If they've spoken a prophecy over your life and you don't see it manifest, they told you you speak to 1,000 people, you are still struggling to speak to 20. Amplify it with fasting. And in addition to that, we need to fast regularly as Christians. It is a regular exercise to sharpen our spiritual senses. When you need clarity and hearing and direction, you need to fast. The church in Antioch fasted for direction. When Paul and Silas needed to ordain elders in the New Testament, they fasted. Look, I don't want to bust your bubble. There are some dimensions we will not get to as Christians until we get to this place. I'm telling you. There are some things we will not experience because there are depths in the world. There are depths in the world. The Holy Ghost is deep. We are, it's, like, you are, it's like an onion. As you are getting to know, there's another layer. There's another layer. There's another layer. Hallelujah. And uh, the next question, please. Thank, Thank you, you, Minister Fumi. Um, next question. If you're taking daily prescription drugs, which require you to eat, how can you effectively fast? It depends. What are you eating? There are a lot of things to eat. Daniel ate. You can go on the Daniel fast so that you only eat light food. 
you know? So there are some fasts that are good for people that are on medications. Eat light food. I remember some time ago, I, was, um, I, was, um, I wasn't feeling very good. So I went to the GP. My husband insisted I go to the GP. So I went to the GP and then, oh, you have to give you this medicine. You have to eat and you take it for 28 days. I knew that, if, and then I went, I said, for hospital to 24 is better. So I, I sat with this thing. I sat with this word. I sat with it. I brought out all my healing scriptures again because it is medicine to all my flesh. I'm not saying you should do that. We're on different levels, you know, but that's but because I knew there was no way I could go for 28 days and eat every day. No, no, I can't. Not at this level. Am I might say you should do so. No, I'm just saying you, we get there. We're all growing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. At the end of this day. Go on, my dear sister. Okay, sorry. Then the next question says, I have heard that praying at midnight or in the middle of the night is more effective than praying during the day. Would you recommend this? If you can, why not? If you can, why not? One of the things I learned very quickly, my husband is a converted Muslim. And um, when I married him, for the first two, three years of our marriage, he would wake up in the middle of the night and start to pray. I didn't understand. I said, why are you praying now? Then he said, and then he showed me something in the scriptures about commanding your money. That that is why Muslims pray first thing in the morning. So if you know that you cannot wake up to pray, it's the, praying at night is effective because number one, for me, it gives me clarity. For some people, you are able to come. You don't wake up at seven o'clock and be commanding the day that has finished. So if you can, if you got the bandwidth, there's no legitimacy in it in the Bible. You know, but if you can, please do. Thank you, Minister Fumi. Another question. What do you say uh, uh, to people who suggest that um, fasting is works? And how, um, how would you elaborate on that? Or how would you expound on that? I think, first of all, I think that question, one of some of somebody's had me that question before, and the person is actually a pastor. And it depends. You know, everything the Lord Jesus Christ tells us to do is for ourselves. It's not for him. He loves us. His love for us is so potent, it cannot change. And the springboard of understanding the love of God is what gives us liberty as Christians. If you don't understand this love that God has for you, every time you want to exert yourself a bit, you reading the Bible can be works. You can be reading it to tick the box. Praying can be works. You can be doing it to just say, I prayed this morning. But when you are doing it from a love standpoint, a love standpoint that Jesus already bled and died for this thing. You will not deprive me of it. I will not go without this. God bled and died for this person. You will not have this person. This nation must turn back to God. Do you understand what I mean? So when you are thinking of that in your heart, you are thinking of it from a love perspective, not from a works perspective. A work perspective is a rigid type of thing. I must confess 100 times. I must confess 150 times. I must fast 50 days a week. No. The reason people fast, for me, the reason I fast is because I want to hear him. What's on your mind? What are you saying? And I can give you tons of testimonies. I mean, I still got one two days ago. There's a particular brother who'd left, who'd left the church. He's left about, he's just gone. I mean, this guy just gone. He just vaccinated completely. And I was praying one day and the Holy Spirit said to call him. I didn't have his number. So I called somebody that has his number. I said, give me his number. And I called his number. And my first question to him, where are you? He said, huh? I said, where are you? My dear, where are you? God's law. And that day, he said, God had been speaking to him. So that prompting by the Holy Spirit, God, Lord, your spirit has to be so sharp, so sharp, so razor sharp that you know what he's saying. Should I talk to him? To, today, I went to the bank. I saw somebody there wearing a, 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 a Nigerian outfit. I live in a place where every person is like, for you to see a black person is like, yeah, I mean, you, you have to see at least 1,500 white people. So for me to see a black person in, in this place, I asked her, I said, oh, how are you doing? So I spoke to her. She said, oh, I'm well. I said, you are wearing a, a, a Nigerian outfit. Are you Nigerian? She said, I'm Nigerian. Oh, she said, am I Nigerian? I said, oh, my dad is Nigerian. And then we, got, we started talking. I said, what are you doing in Hamden? And then she said, oh, I came to see some people. Guess what? The people she came to see are the people that look after my son. How in the world? How in the world could I? So I called him. I said, guess who I met? He said, oh, that must be a Holy Ghost incident. God wanted me to meet her. I deposited 
deposited something in her that there's no way I deposited in her because I don't even know where she is. The Holy Spirit is on point to get to, to effectively work with him. Your spirit has to be sharp. I like to eat. Oh my goodness. Everybody likes to eat. I like cakes. I like things like that. I know some of you are, you know, everybody wants to eat. Who doesn't want to eat? But you know, you need to keep your spirit sharp. Brother Hagen talks about living a fasted life, which means you live a life where you never, you are, you are never full to the overflow. You're just eating enough. It's not works. You are doing this from the standpoint of receiving everything Jesus has paid for. We are in partnership with him. We are working with him. We are in agreement with him. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Minister, for me. Uh, so I, I have my son, I have a teenage son, and we have been standing against sickness and disease in his body for well over a year. Well, we've, uh, I, I've gone through a period of time when I pray in tongues, where we, he and I listen to teaching, where I confess the word and I rebuke the sickness and disease and um, the symptoms are still there. Uh, so based on what you're saying in terms of things, uh, stubborn, stubborn issues, it seems, would you recommend that or I should go on a fast? Amplify those prayers with fasting. And you know, you have a legitimate right, whoever so that you have a right to speak over your son. Get the scriptures out. Miss a few meals here and there. Go for three days. Just go for three days. Like I said, I don't have a lot of time, but I'll give you a quick testimony. When I was pregnant with my son, they said 13 major things was wrong with him. One, three. Major things. They said he will never sit down. He had something. Some doctors here. They said he had something called spina something. They showed me the scan. It's not that they were lying. His bones were curved. And it's actually it's two days ago that I found that those bones are finally gone. In. Every day. Nine months, I was saying to Agatha, I was pregnant. From the minute my husband knew I was pregnant to the day I gave birth to my child, he was on a fast. So every time we go, they say, this one is not working. Kidneys are not, there's no enough water in this. There's a low, they gave all bad, I mean, bad stuff. Majorly bad stuff. That you know that this one, one woman was calling me constantly that I need to come for counseling because the boy will never sit down. The boy will not be. They gave me so much stuff, mind boggling stuff. But when you are on top, Arema Shwanda, sorry, I didn't want to. Uh, when you are so charged, so full of the Holy Ghost, and you are consistently working with Him, you can put a lid on it. And by the way, the prayers we are praying are working. It's just that you are not exerting enough energy. But the lie the enemy tells us sometimes is that your prayers are not working. Who said so? They are working, but you, it's like when you are traveling from London to Manchester, if you live in England, it's about three hours. If I travel for an hour, am I in Manchester? No. If you are, if you are on a bike and I'm, 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 I'm driving a, a Jag, are we on the same level? If somebody, if somebody was driving a bike, another person was driving a car, and another one had a jet, who will get there faster? They are all going to the same destination. You can accelerate it. What fasting does, is that it gives it turbocharges your prayer life. This thing is not there, there's no hard and fast rule. Oh God, I have to stop. But you you can you can you can you can pray when you when you fast and you pray in the Holy Ghost. One of the things I did then was I had rigid times of prayer. So I prayed the prayer every every three hours I'm praying in the tongue for one, for one hour. Every three hours, especially on the weekend, you can make it two. <laughs> By the time the Holy Ghost lands on the thing, I remember going, my friend. We can catch up anybody. Okay, my pastor said I can go until 335 past. One more question, please. When I was believing God to be married, I had prayed and fasted many years, many years. And I was born again when I was 15. So I knew the things of the spirit. So it was not I was a novice. I love to pray. I love the Lord. So, but I knew this. I then, but I saw in the scripture like Daniel that this was my backright. Two are better than one. It is not good. God is the one that said that a man should be alone. So I wasn't, I knew I wasn't tripping. So I had to sit down. I had to do what I'd not done before. That was my first time of going on the 21 day prayer and fasting journey with the Lord. I said this all the time, every day. Minimum of two hours I prayed in the spirit. Every day. Five days after my 21 days prayer and fasting, my husband showed up. 
Do you know this same principle has been replicated by many people on my on the single but not satisfied prayer prayer platform? I went for a wedding 23rd of, 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 of um, July. I don't know if she's online now. That sister had known, she had mastered the arts. She knew how to do it. She said for me, I know that we just go on another 21 days. She knew how to do it. So she was just, am, am I saying that's a prescription? You can go for three days and get your own. But that's what I did. And every person that has testified on that platform went on that journey. I'm not saying you should go. I'm just saying they did. Your own may be three days. Your own may be seven days. Your own may be consistently going here and there. I have a friend who moved, who migrated from South Africa. But when he came from South Africa, he, was, he had to, he and his four children were staying with his auntie. He had nowhere to stay. They gave him a place in St. Albans five years ago. Do you know he bought that house cash down two years ago? What happened within five years? This guy locked up, locked, locked up himself. He said, something was break. This world must work. This world must work. Today, this guy has over three zero, three zero services providing service, three zero houses providing services for the government in this country. In this country, what happened? One scripture: He maintains my lot. He maintains my lot. God, there is an allotment for me, and he stood with it, and he has it. Sorry, I don't want to be pedantic. Next question: Have we finished? <laughs> Thank you very much, Minister for me um there is one last question which says could you please share your healing bible portions bible scriptures um so would appreciate it if you could do that as well as share as many more testimonies as you can manage within the time thank you okay go and get this book can you see the book it's a book by charles caps it's called called creative power for healing this book has all the scriptures you need for your healing. See, I just picked this right in my Bible, so I, so that we don't we don't go with it. We don't we don't spend more time. I'll give you another testimony. After I got married, I could I didn't have a child. First year, second year, third year, we did this, did everything you can do that medicine. No, I'm not knocking the doctors. You guys are very good people. There's no, there was no child. Then I woke up for me. Have you forgotten how you got got married? So we went. I think that was the third year. We went first time, we did 21 days prayer and fasting. Nothing happened. By the fifth year, I was now into this regularly. Like I said, you can turbocharge this thing. You can make this thing happen. Praying in the Holy Ghost, praying the scriptures, praying the scriptures. God will, God will, God will look on me with favor. He will multiply me. Children are the heritage of the Lord. I was speaking this in the morning, in the evening, praying extensively in the Holy Spirit because He knows what the problem is. That's how I got that one. Prayer and fasting is not an option. When we were moving to this place that I live, we live in a village outside London. The first, all the houses, there are like a million dollars. And you know I'm a millionaire. <laughs> so I knew in the natural, we will never move here. What did I do? We went on the same journey. And now we're living here in our own home. On the same journey. God has given you all things. All things that pertains to this life and godliness. What fasting does is sometimes it enlarges your capacity. You see it in the word of God and say, yes, I can have that. Why not? Why won't I do that? Why can't I be a vice president? The people that are there, they, do they have two heads? Why can't they be the minister of information technology? Why can't I be? You can't ask yourself. Fasting is, is, is awesome. I'm telling you, it's awesome. I was in the church. I've been to that church to preach several times. I noticed a particular brother, every time he sees me, he runs away from me. He told me, I said, oh, well, brother. I said, no, I don't shake women. So one day I saw him shaking a girl. So I said, ah, my brother, you said you don't shake women. Okay, come and give me a hug. My sister, as soon as I hugged the brother, he started manifesting. He started shaking, he started jerking. How can you be a minister of God and you go to, you go to church on a full stomach? Your spirit will be dull. I'm not saying don't eat, but you can't go on a full, you can't have continental breakfast and you are going to minister. You will be heavy. You won't hear perfectly. You need your spirit so sharp that everything that comes near you knows you are hot. There is fire and there is fire. 
there are different kinds of fire. I was, and I were having a conversation the other day. I said, my son told me that the blue part of the fire is the hottest part. I didn't know that. You can be so hot that before you say it, that is it. When you say it is a decree, you will decree a thing and it is established. You don't need to go back two times, three times, four times, five times because your spirit is so sharp. As you say it, you have it. That's it. I think I've gone, gone past my time now. Pastor Agi, thank you so much for having me. God bless you. I love you. You're a major blessing. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I don't, I don't even know how to end such a meeting. It's just so amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I believe that what you have spoken today was just straight for me. I don't know about anybody else online. I was totally, totally stirred up. And I'm just going to jump on, on that journey. And if we're friends, for me, you need to really, really be a good friend and show me that journey. And I want to believe, God, that you and I would, would, would go back to that teaching, listen to it again and again, and endeavor to act upon it. These are things that need to be done, not just heard. When you hear the word of God, it is so that you, you go ahead and do it. And the blessing is in the doing. The Bible says that the doer of the word is blessed in all his deeds. And so I want to encourage us tonight. Thank you very much for coming. The prayer school continues on the, on the second, um, the fourth Thursday of this month, which will be the 25th of August. So please be here. We will have um, more to bring you in, in prayer school. We have another teacher coming on on that day. So I encourage you, please take your time to listen to these teachings again and again, and you will find that you will move your spiritual journey a whole new level upward. Amen. Let's share the, the a word in prayer. And just to remind you that at the very end of prayer school, there's the last class is a whole hour of question and answer. So I know questions will come up as you start reviewing the, the contents of these classes. Write them down. Don't just keep it in your head. Write them down so that you can bring them to that one hour Q&A session. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to, to spend time in your word concerning prayer and fasting. Lord, we have learned that we can amplify our prayers with fasting. We give, it, give our prayers louder volume with fasting. Help us, Lord, because indeed the spirit is willing, but the flesh tends to be weak. And so we want to team up with the Holy Spirit and quicken our flesh so that more and more we will be profitable sons and daughters upon the earth. Thank you for calling us into a life of victorious living. And so as we, as we stand, oh God, we stand in faith, knowing that we can pray and receive answers even as we add fastings to our prayers. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Prayer school continues. And of course, aerobics continues. Join us tomorrow at 7 p.m. God bless you. Good night. <laughs>